And within each episode, some of the stars come forward and the other ones come back, but then it switches throughout the episode so that by the end of the 30 minutes, every single character in the show has been in the spotlight. So again, you can equate that to how you use shape, how you use line. Mitchell, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is about owning your authentic voice so that you can make compelling work and show up in the world as the artist that you want to be. So today I'm going to talk about composition in kind of an unusual way. What I've been finding is that in conversations with mentorship artists that I'm working with, I often talk about well, we often talk about, you know, what are the fundamental principles of composition? And many people say, well, I know you're supposed to have a focal point, or I know that I'm supposed to divide things in thirds, and I know that there's supposed to be certain kinds of relationships. And many people find that constricting. So I flip it around and say, what are you most interested in expressing in this painting at this point in time? And is there a story? And if there is a story, what's the star of the show here? And who are the, who are the supporting actors? So, and then I often find myself relating that to certain movies or certain television shows that are great uh, comparisons to what I'm talking about. So, for instance, I think almost everyone at some point in their life has seen The Wizard of Oz. So in that story, Dorothy is the clear star of the show. And every actor, every role, every character in that story is there to support Dorothy's story. Some of them have stronger roles than others, she plays off of each one of them in different ways. And without the strength of those supporting characters, Dorothy would be a lot less interesting. She would be sort of a flat character. So if you think about your composition, think about, okay, what's the most important element here of the story? And the story can be anything from, I want it to be about orange, that's the story, to I want it to capture the inner essence of this incredibly perfect fall day or anything in between. I, I need to, to express the grief I'm going through. I need to be shout from the mountaintops and express the joy that I have. Whatever it is that's driving the expression in your painting, it's important to understand whether there is a star of the show, and if so, how do the supporting elements of line, color, shape, value, and texture come together to support that star of the show? So another element of composition is what I call the all-star cast, which is when there is with the, a composition is without a clear star of the show, and every single element has its um is a star and sometimes it comes forward sometimes it go back when when it go, comes forward another one might go back so there's this constant movement and all of the shapes are equally valuable in different ways and so there's this kinetic kind of um, overall movement quality in a composition. So I also think that most of you may have seen sometime in your lifetime at least one episode of Friends. Uh, I happen to be a big fan of Friends. It's, I'm out. <laughs> um, when my daughter was growing up, we watched Friends a lot at a certain stage of her development. It was a great way to open up conversations about things. And to this day, I find myself still laughing. And what's brilliant, I think, about the writing of the show is that the six characters are all stars. And in fact, when um, 
they were negotiating to have a higher salary, every single one of them said, well, we all need the same salary or we all quit, which is substantiates the strength of each star being of equal power. And within each episode, some of the stars come forward and the other ones come back, but then it switches throughout the episode so that by the end of the 30 minutes, every single character in the show has been in the spotlight. So again, you can equate that to how you use shape, how you use line, how it runs throughout your composition. Are the shapes in contrast with each other to create space? Are they of equal size so that the space is more flat but moving in different ways? And, and what I found is that when you're clear about what kind of composition is developing in the painting that you're working with, then it it makes the story all that much more compelling and the essence that comes out in the painting all that much clearer and deeper for those who see it and for you as the artist. So think about this, think about your favorite movies. And, and this is a huge clue as to whether you're a person that tends to do star of the show compositions with strong supporting actors, whether you like to have, you know, for instance, the movie It's Complicated, which is another movie I enjoy. You may have yet to see it. It's with Meryl Streep and Alec Baldwin, and they are both the star of the show, although Meryl Streep is slightly more of the main star, but Alec Baldwin is, and Steve Martin. So actually the two of them, how could I forget Steve Martin? but um, Alec Baldwin and um, Meryl Streep are married, what, divorced, and so there, there's that relationship, and then Steve Martin is the guy that's coming in on the scene, and so there's this three-way thing going on. So Meryl Streep is the star of the show, but then there are these two other characters that are very close in relationship in making that star have a greater context. So again, think about that in terms of the kind of compositions that you like to make. You know, do you have a clear central character and then blank space all around that? Do you have a central element that is in close relationship with other elements so that the one or two other things with the central element are working to create a greater context? Or are you a person that tends to like to have flatter space and have movement throughout and without any one particular area that's more important than another? And Think about this. Think about the movies that you really enjoy. Think about the, your favorite television series that you're hooked on. Are they all-star casts? Are they clear star of the show? Are there several stars of the show with other supporting actors? And when you watch a show, where maybe the directing is a little weak or the writing is less strong, you can tell that the whole thing is having trouble fitting together or holding your attention because either the star of the show is weak or the supporting actors are weak or the overall composition is not holding together. And you can feel that in the storytelling of a movie or a television show. Similarly, you can feel that when you're looking at a painting where the supporting actors, the supporting characters that are in the composition, whether they are line, color, shape, value, and texture, are lacking in their ability to hold the central character. So for instance, let's say you have brilliant orange in a piece 
and then you have a reflected area of orange that's sort of like a light peach. If that light peach isn't strong enough to hold the brilliant orange, then the brilliant orange is going to run away with the show. I am going to show you a few examples of what I'm talking about, and then I'll circle back on the other side. This painting is titled Blue Highway. It's oil on panel, 24 inches square, and it has a clear star of the show, the blue highway in the central part of the composition. And every piece of visual language in this composition supports the strength of the star of the show. So for instance, in value, the highest contrast between the the lightest light on the right side of the blue and the darkest dark on the left side of the blue allow the blue to be all that much stronger in its color in relation to the rest of the composition, the rest of the colors. The larger shapes on either side of it are both neutral colors and they each have undertones of warm, somewhat orange-based colors, which in fact, orange is the opposite color of blue, but because the orange is very muted, it is acting as an imposing reflecting color to the blue, which gives the blue a sense of luminosity by having the reflection, and especially the opposite color reflection, meaning that it's muted versus the, the bright color of the blue. So having a muted color next to the bright colored or in the same vicinity as the bright color gives the color that's bright all that much more luminosity. The shapes are, while they're similar in size, they're all different, so that that creates a dynamic movement around the entire composition, and at the same time, they're all there to support the strength of the central character. The texture in each aspect of the larger shapes surrounding the blue is much more textural than the flat blue area, thereby creating another kind of dynamic movement and um, contrast between the central character and the strong supporting actors. This painting, I believe, is a good example of an all-star cast. This is titled Transforming and it is oil on panel, 18 inches square. And there is, to some degree, some central element here, but every aspect of the composition, both in color, in value, in texture, in line, pull your eye out of the center so that every other area has its moment as the star. So this can grab your eye over here and then it points you up to this area up over here where the orange is brighter than what's down below it, but then this red over here is brighter than this orange. Thereby each element has a moment of being in the limelight, shall we say. And this white down here is in relation to the white here the texture throughout the entire painting is active and passive so that there are areas where there's flat color flanked by areas of um, textural lines so that you get a sense of harmony throughout the entire composition with all the different elements and at the same time it's without a clear central focus. This painting, I think, is a good example of having a clear star of the show and strong supporting actors that are right next to the star of the show so that they are, um, you know, it's almost like there's uh, three people or three aspects of a composition that are working together to be the central stars 
even though one is slightly more dominant. So the yellow, in my opinion, is slightly more dominant, but the black being the darkest dark in the entire composition grabs your attention. But be this is not a doorstop. You do not get stuck here because the yellow pulls you out. And this shape here acts as a stabilizing factor to the strength of the yellow going from edge to edge. So if you hold your hand up and knock out this shape here, just or your finger, just knock it out, you see how the yellow shape is floating now and it feels unsupported. So this would be a lot less successful of a composition without this shape being in the place that it's in. The top part here is more of a backdrop for the relationship between these central shapes here. And the, the white creamy background is allowing both the yellow to come forward as well as causing high contrast between the background and this dark, the black uh, square shape here. So I hope this particular way of discussing composition has been illuminating for you. And when you watch a movie or your favorite television series that you're currently involved in, maybe you'll see it differently. And maybe you'll start to correlate what you like about it with what you're doing in your, your studio practice. Um, I'd love to hear in the chat feed below how you take this and what your revelations are in um, seeing the, the correlations between your work and your favorite movies and television shows. Let us all know. Put some comments down below. It'd be great. And to support your um, journey with composition, which is always a struggle for some people and others not, head on over to the Whole Artist Mastery website where you can put your email in and download a free booklet that has a compositional checkpoint guide that talks about different ways of looking at your composition and in different words talks about the star of the show and um, supporting characters. Uh, I call it the host and guest, um, the dominant and the subordinate, which is something I actually learned studying in China many, many years ago. So. Do that and um, let me know how that supports you in your practice. Always love to hear from you in the comments below. And also just to let you know that we do have an online course called Understanding Your Visual Language, which also talks about this particular aspect of composing in your work and how you develop the use of compositional language to bring your unique, authentic voice into your work. So thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.